गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी माय सेल्फ इज प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर राजेंद्र देशपांडे टुडे इज मंडे नाइनटीन ऑफ जून 2017 थाउजेंड सेवनटीन माय डियर फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विथ यू द आयुर्वेदिक पंचकर्म इन आवर मेडिकल प्रैक्टिस एंड टुडेज डिस्कशन विल बी प्रिडोमिनेंटली रिगार्डिंग द स्नेहन or the oleation treatment this snehana or the oleation is the therapeutic process of providing the oiliness or the lubrication to the body it gives the softness and unctuousness to the body this is the therapeutic procedure and can be utilized also as a preparatory process which we call as a purva karma for the purification or pancha karma or detoxification process so this is the one part that you can use it as a purva karma or the preparatory process for pancha karma but snehana can also be used as the main part of treatment or main course of the therapy for example i can give one example in anemic patient dadimadi grit is used for internal snehana before virechana karma i repeat for the anemic patient dadimadi grit is used for internal snehana before virechana karma also another example in asthma vasa grit in bronchial asthmatic patient vasa grit is used for internal snehana before vamana karma now let us talk about the snehana karma indications where we can use this particular snehana karma we are talking most practical examples so that can be useful directly in our medical practice in stomatitis esophagitis gastritis duodenitis or even enteritis or the colitis which we call it as a grahani dadi maadi ghrit or even simple cows freshly cooked ghee is given for internal sneha paan next is iri medadi tail or iri medadi oil this is also snehana can be used locally in case of the stomatitis next example is anemia or the pandu in pandu or the anemic condition kalyanaka grit or pancha gavya grit can be used for internal sneha paana in generalized wasting in tuberculosis like cachexia due to the tuberculosis weight loss vasa grit or dhanvantaram grit is beneficial for internal sneha paan dhanvantar oil or kujhambu is beneficial for the external application in the treatments of abhyanga or pizichil or it is also called as a kaya sek pizichil or kaya sek in vat vyadhi or musculoskeletal diseases especially vat vyadhi takes place because of the two main reasons dhatu kshejanya vat prakop and margavarodha janya vat prakop that means due to the degeneration or deficiency vata prakop will be there or due to the obstruction pathology vata prakop will be there remember sneha kalpana sneha paan snehana is useful only in dhatu kshejanya vata prakop and not in margavarodha janya vata prakop so all sorts of autoimmune diseases dhatu kshejanya vata prakop we must use this snehana or sneha paana kalpana for example 
you take the diseases like osteoporosis, cervical spondylosis, backache, lumbago. So all in these conditions we can use lakshadi oil, bala ashwagandhadi oil for abhyanga as well as for basti or medicated enema. So I repeat for vatavyadi and musculoskeletal diseases, lakshadi oil or bala ashwagandhadi oil. Now let us talk about neurological conditions like for example stroke, Parkinson, Alzheimer's disease. Again here the pathology is mainly about the degenerative type of diseases. So here you can use the dhanvantaram oil, bala oil for abhyanga as well as basti or medicated enema. Now next. Brahmi Ghrita or Panchagavya Ghrita is used for internal Snehapana as well as for Nasya Kalpana or nasal medication. Because as everybody knows for Urdhva Jatrugata Vyadi that is the problems above the clavicle, the problems of ear, nose, throat, problems of eyes problems of the brain, when you see that the patient is very weak, vata pitta predominant disease, then you can use the nasya kalpana with brahmi ghrita or pancha gavya ghrita. Next indication of sneha pana, hormonal problems like for example infertility, impotency, phala ghrita, the name is Falagrita has excellent results which can be used as internal snehana or basti as medicated enema. After seeing the indications of snehana, I would like to tell you something about types of the sneha. So types of the sneha, first classification is based on the source from where we are collecting these oily substance or the fatty substance. So there are two sources, one is plant source and another is animal source. Plant source like for example sesame oil, olive oil, mustard oil or castor or resinous oil from the errand. Animal source is like a vasa and majja, like the body fat, like a mutton or bone marrow. So this is animal source and these are the types of snehana or sneha kalpana or the dravya, sneha dravya. Next I would like to tell you something about properties of sneha. First we will see about the oil or the taila kalpa, taila product, oil products. When we say the taila, Ayurveda always say tilod bhavam tailam. That means when there is no specific mention about which type of the oil, you must consider that oil as a base oil or sesame oil. Oil can be derived from any oil seed. But for Ayurvedic treatment, sesame oil is the most beneficial and very much commonly used. So whenever the word taila is there, the oil is sesame oil and this particular oil is having bitter and pungent taste. This sesame oil is best for decreasing the vata prakopa. So whenever there is a vata imbalance and if you want to control the vata imbalance because vata properties are ruksha that is a dry and Sheetha. So to control these two properties we use the sesame oil which is having the snig, the unctuous and also the ushna or the hot potency. Sesame oil also can decrease or control the kapha prakopa because kapha is also having the sheetha property 
and although it is a guru the ccm oil is a laghu in nature so it also contracts with the kapha so ccm oil is best to control vat and kapha janit or generated diseases ccm oil gives the soothing effect to the skin it soften so whenever you find that your skin is very dry maybe because of the vitamin a deficiency or allergic dermatitis or fissures on the palm and sole never forget to use the massage with the ccm oil then it also gives the muscle power and increase the muscle mass so muscular strength is always increased after the massage with the ccm oil so it is very well used in the muscular dystrophy patients or also the hemiplegia patients it also relieves the pain because ayurveda says pain is always there when it is accompanied with vata pathology vata drute nasti ruja so ruja or the pain is always with the vata so it can be controlled with oil application even simply if you have the abdominal pain and it is because of the some simple reasons like indigestion or colicky pain is there then you can give the gentle massage with the ccm oil clockwise massage is essential but when i am talking about abdominal massage one must be very careful that the pathology should not be surgical pathology what we call it as a acute abdomen so there should not be obstruction into susception volvulus perforation you first confirm it is not there and then you can apply the ccm oil for example i have found very much interesting results in the patients of constipation so whenever the patient complains to you constipation always ask him to do regularly ccm oil massage before bath half an hour oil lukewarm water should be around the umbilicus clockwise massage is should be given to the constipated patients it is very interesting to note that ccm oil massage is also good for eyesight this is very interesting but of course i will recommend for the problems for the eye we always do the tarpana or the netra basti with trifala grit remember not with the ccm oil that is trifala grit netra basti is very very useful for vata predominant eye problems like dryness of the eyes asthenopia now the computer century is there so everybody is using the lot of computers and televisions so there is a strain to the eye muscles strain to the conjunctiva strain to the mucous membrane so eye becomes dry not only we we are talking about vitamin a deficiency where there is a xerophthalmia where there is a bitot spots of course there you can also use the trifala grit netra basti but now i am talking about the computer eye syndrome there you must use the trifala grit netra basti and also you can give the nasya with the anu oil anu tail next we will talk about ghee after the tail we will talk about go grit or medicated ghee ghee is supposed to be the best sneha dravya in chaturvida sneha ayurveda says that there are two types or rather four types of the sneha kalpana grit tail vasa and majja amongst these ayurveda says grit is number 1 grit is the best sneha that is a standard sneha so basically this ghee is also like a oil we consider the ccm oil when we talk about the ghee it is always cow's ghee why this is the number 1 sneha the important property is sanskar anuvartana sanskar anuvartana this is the sanskrit word that means this medicated ghee will follow the properties of the herbs by which it is processed ghee will take the properties of the herbs by which it is processed the word is sanskar anuvartana sanskar is a processing so that is the best thing about the grutha and when it takes the property of the herb 
it will not lose its own property that is more important it will maintain its own properties so that is very much essential part of ghee now after that we will talk about the classification of sneha according to the function just now we have talked about according to the material according to the dravya chaturvida sneha now we will talk about function mainly there are two types of functions shamana and shodhana so shamana sneha pan and shodhana shamana sneha pan so when we i say the shamana shamana is a palliative treatment that means we are controlling the dosha inside the body itself we are not removing the doshas outside the body of course we are not talking about normal doshas we are talking about pathological dosha or vitiated dosha who are disturbed so when we take out the dosha from the body that is called as a shodhana or pancha karma or detoxification process so these are the shamana sneha and shodhana sneha shamana sneha is used when vitiation doshas is moderate type that is more important so dosha prakop is madhyama type or the severe type so when it is moderate you can use shamana when it is severe the dosh must be take out that is shodhana it is used in the dose of 5 ml to 40 ml od once in a day or bd according to the condition shamana sneha is usually given before meal that is prak bhakta prak means before bhakta means eating before eating the food you must take this sneha na and it is used for the treatment for the various diseases like i again i repeat shamana sneha examples शमन स्नेह एग्जाम्पल्स दाड़ीमादी घृत फॉर एनिमिया दाड़ीमादी घृत फॉर एनिमिया दाड़ीमादी घृत फॉर एनिमिया शमन नेक्स्ट पंचतिक्त घृत इन स्किन डिसीजेस शमन स्नेह पंचतिक्त घृत इन स्किन डिसीजेस शमन स्नेह पंचतिक्त घृत in skin diseases shamana sneha now i will talk about shodhana sneha naturally it is used in the treatment of pancha karma which are the five pancha karma or detoxification processes according to ayurved vamana virechana basti rakta mokshan and nasya so in this all five processes basically shodhana sneha is more useful for vamana and virechana karma as a purva karma for internal oleation because pancha karma is a invasive processes they give stress to the your internal organs it is irritating to your internal organs so before giving any vamana or virechana dravyas you must give the internal oleation or internal sneha pan as a purva karma but this particular sneha pan is used when there are dosha prakop or dosha vitiation is of severe type of nature now when sneha is given as a purva karma dose of the sneha is increased very gradually or step by step there is one method purva karma is always advocated for 3 5 or 7 days everybody knows 3 days 5 days and 7 days purva karma 3 days for the mrudu koshta people 3 days sneha pan for mrudu koshta people koshta means sensitivity of the colon kosht means sensitivity of the colon so their kosht or the intestines are very sensitive so they can immediately very easily lubricated so 3 days for mrudu kosht 
फाइव डेज फॉर मध्यम कोष्ट एंड सेवन डेज फॉर क्रूर कोष्ट क्रूर कोष्ट मीन्स द सेंसिटिविटी इज ऑफ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टाइप ऑफ इट इज नॉट वेरी इजीली सेंसिटाइज सो इट रिक्वायर्स ए लॉट ऑफ डेज ल्युब्रिकेशन एंड दैट्स वाय शोधन स्नेह पान इज गिवन फॉर सेवन डेज देन हाउ इट इज गिवन देर इज अ वन प्रोसेस विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ टिपिकल इंक्रीजिंग डोज प्रोसेस द फर्स्ट डे यू गिव एज अ ट्रायल डोज दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ ट्रायल डोज इन इंग्लिश इन आयुर्वेद इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ रसी यसी मात्रा द डिफिकल्ट वर्ड रसी यसी मात्रा रसी यसी मात्रा I will say trial dose. Rasi yasi matra, trial dose of snail pan. Very little, 30 to 50 ml, simple sesame oil, or medicated ghee or simple cow's ghee is given early in the morning. Say for example, you have given after the patient has woke up, he has morning rituals like toilets and brushing of the teeth, etc. Then he is asked to take that. 30 or 50 ml of the ghee or the oil and then he is asked to take anupan as a hot water warm water is very much essential it's like a giving a soothing effect after the oil internal taking and he is asked to note down when he feels to eat something so some people will feel after 3 hours some people will feel after 4 hours that they should take the breakfast or they should take the lunch so then there is a mathematical equation for example for digesting sneha it takes the 4 hours so 4 hours for 50 ml and we have to give the ghee or the oil till the patient will not feel the hunger for 12 hours that is called as a madhyama matra madhyam matra sneha pan is ideal in the purva karma madhyama matra snehapan so equation is like this 4 hours for 50 ml and then for 12 hours how much ml we should give so it will arbitrarily come as a 150 ml now we have to give the 150 ml as a shodhana snehapan step by step like first two days 50 ml next two days 100 ml next two days 150 ml so this is the ideal way of increasing dose of shodhana sneha pan and how much days usually it is given till the patient feels hunger only at the night that is 12 hours he will not feel that he is hungry and automatically also see the samyak sneha pan lakshana so adequate lubrication is achieved adequate lubrication is achieved that is called as a samyak sneha pan in ayurveda adequate lubrication is achieved by optimal dose of sneha and these adequate lubrication symptoms or clinical features are most important are three they are first symptom is sneha vidvesh that the patient will feel nauseating to drink that particular oil or ghee he will say no no doctor it is enough that is called in ayurveda sneha vidvesh hmm? no feeling for the sneha but remember this particular clinical feature is confusing why because on the first day the patient may also feel the same thing that i don't want to drink because it is not habitual so first day nausea is not because of the samyak snigdhata or adequate lubrication it is because of the non habitual but after 5 days or after 7 days when the patient has drunk enough sneha and when he complains that there is no it is enough i don't want to drink more that is real sneha vidvesh so the students must understand the difference first day sneha vidvesh and the last day sneha vidvesh 
I think this is very interesting and one must be very cautious. So, this is the first clinical feature of adequate snehapan. Second, Sanskrit word first, adhastat sneha darshan. Adhastat sneha darshan. Adhastat means at the lower part of your body that is in the stools. When you go for toilet, you feel while cleaning your genitals or the rectal part, you feel that there is oiliness. You feel that oil is coming through your stools. This particular condition in Ayurveda it is described as Adhastat Sneha Darshana. Sneha means oil. Darshan means to see. Where to see? In the stool. So, that is the second important feature. And sec third one, skin oiliness. He feels the doctor, my hands or the legs or the forehead skin is looking to be little bit oily before it is not there. So, these three features are very, very important to diagnose samyak snigdha lakshane. That means adequate lubrication has been achieved. Okay. So, which type of the sneha can be used? for this Shodhana Sneha. Two important examples you can remember, two or three. Trifala Ghrita in obesity patient, to treat the obesity, to give the woman in obese patient or hyperlipidemia, hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia. Cholesterol level is high, triglyceride level is high, hmm? LDL is high then you must prescribe Trifala Ghrita as a Shodhana Sneha before giving the Vamana to the obese patient. Next example, Pancha Tikta Ghrita. Pancha Tikta Ghrita in increasing dose in the patients of skin diseases and also hyperacidity. And you want to give the woman. But when I am saying, the patient of gastritis, patient of hyperacidity and you are expecting to give the woman, be careful. Why? Because the patient may be suffering from gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer, GU or DU. So, you must confirm clinically as well as if necessary by endoscopy, gastro duodenoscopy or esophago gastro duodenoscopy you must perform and then only you can advise the vamana otherwise no third type of the sneha kalpana is a bruhana sneha first was shamana second was shodhana and i am now talking about bruhana sneha here what we do it's a type of shamana we mixed this particular ghee or the oil in the food and give to the patient in a very small quantity. Because of the small quantity, it stimulates the digestive fire. One of the very important property of the cow's ghee is Agni Deepana in Ayurveda. Agni Deepana, it will increase your digestive fire. It will stimulate Jatvagni. It will stimulate Dhatvagni. It will stimulate Bhutagni. Overall, cow's ghee will stimulate all metabolic processes. All metabolic processes, all enzyme activities that will be stimulated by using internally cow's ghee. And when naturally your Agni is good, your metabolism is good, what will happen? Your nourishing will be very good nourishing process will be good and patient will gradually increase his weight. So, this is very much essential as a part of the chronic diseases. Maybe it may be anorexia, loss of appetite due to tuberculosis, anorexia, loss of appetite in the patients of cancer, anorexia, loss of appetite in the patients of HIV. So, all these patients suffer from weight loss. 
here we must recommend the cow's ghee as a agni deepana as well as vishagna you know this property vishagna huh? so these patients should ha make a habit to regularly consume a little bit ghee and that will lead to the proper nourishment of dhatu so some of the oils for external use or some of the ghees for internal use oil is mainly used externally for the abhyanga and ghees are used internally as a supplement to the food so dhanvantaram oil or dhanvantaram kujambu this kujambu word is very interesting from kerala medicines when external application is prepared with using oil and ghee both external application is prepared using oil and ghee together that is called as a kujambu so naturally it will be more powerful than simple oil so dhanvantaram oil and if you compare dhanvantaram kujambu which will be more potent dhanvantaram kujambu will be more potent so that is recommended in the general debility and chronic diseases like cancer or degenerative arthritis or motor neuron disease very important motor neuron disease is very common nowadays autoimmune disease degeneration is there so we must use this dhanvantaram kujambu then in the market now dhanvantaram oil capsules are also available so these capsules can be taken internally hmm? that dhanvantaram oil 101 etc kerala preparations are there from the companies like avn or avs okay so we are talking about the classification of sneha up till now we have seen that basically according to the source plant origin animal origin then we say also the according to function that is shodhana shamana and bruhana sneha now according to the pharmacology route of administration how you are using fat treatment or fat substances or sneha kalpana in ayurved two ways as per pharmacology route of administration external and internal simple external is bahya sneha na internal is abhyantara sneha paan so shamana shodhana and bruhana sneha are all types of the internal sneha paan is very clear now we will talk more about external or bahya sneha na now substances like siddha ghrit or siddha tail when we use the word siddha it can be translated as medicated what is meant by siddha ghrit medicated ghee what is meant siddha tail medicated oil so these both can be useful for massage oil massage again this massage or abhyanga two types ekang and sarvang that is local massage or full body massage if you have the only knee joint pain and if you are applying only the narayana taila around the knee anteriorly and posteriorly that is local abhyanga janu abhyanga likewise you can do the local shiro abhyanga am i right then local kati abhyanga let local prushta abhyanga there are lot of things local pada abhyanga you know very important pada abhyanga this pada abhyanga is useful for eye diseases very interesting when the patient comes to you doctor i am having burning of the eyes all the time not only in summer but many times i am having the pitta prakruti and i am having this complaint rather he will tell you because he has some experience with the vaidyas and he will say that i am always having this complaint because of heat in the body so for this patient you can ask 
application of shat dhaut grit very interesting application of shat dhaut grit on the feet not on the eyes on the feet but that will affect your eyes and it will give the cooling effect to the eyes so whenever the patient comes to you for burning of the eyes always ask the patient to apply shat dhaut grit to the feet which is called as padabhyang that is local massage but of course when i say there are other things that we have to control for example he should not go barefoot anywhere he should not use the plastic chappals synthetic he should not use exposed to the lot of sun or the fire he should not eat lot of spicy food that is the basic requisites when we are discussing some names of the diseases over here this is a part of the treatment i am not saying this is the whole treatment hmm? the doctor should take care of all other things when we talk about the disease so shiro abhyanga as a head massage then there are different ways how we can use the bahya snehana another is karna purana very interesting karna purana very few vaidyas are doing this or very few places you will observe this karna purana but this is the one of the best treatment for two diseases one tinnitus tinnitus regular sesame oil karna purana very useful or also you can use bilva taila bilva taila bilva taila karna purana is also useful for the hearing loss complaint especially if this hearing loss aging process or because of the side effect of a drug especially when we talk about tuberculosis treatment injection streptomycin definitely gives the hair loss problem so one must be very careful while using the streptomycin for tuberculosis patient and for this you can use this bilva taila for the karna purana next bahya snehana is akshi tarpana as we have already told you akshi tarpana akshi means eye and tarpana is a lubrication lubrication to the eyes that is called as akshi tarpana what we do we use the netra basti with the trifala ghrita next we can use as a gandush and kavala there is little difference in both the conditions gandush and kavala we feel our mouth cavity with the sneha dravyas so when that dravyas in the mouth when we can move that is called as kavala we cannot move that dravya that is called as gandush so this is there is a minor difference in gandush and kavala but many modern doctors they say only the gargling we know the throat gargling but this is a mouth gargling and mouth gargling is very very beneficial as a preventive as well as a curative of many mouth diseases especially i will recommend sesame oil kavala sesame oil kavala or even sometimes gandusha for the patients of hyper sensitive teeth hyper sensitive teeth because nowadays there is a trend there are a lot of advertisements sensodyne toothpaste you might have been seen that advertisement that is for hypersensitivity teeth because your enamel goes away and the nerve roots are opened up and whenever you drink any hot or any cold substances or liquid that starts severe pain in your teeth so that is called as a hypersensitive teeth and modern doctors always prescribe only the toothpaste sensodyne toothpaste but ayurved will give the recommendation of gargling with the sesame oil regularly second very useful part of it is a shaking of the teeth s h a shake that means sometimes because of the aging process 
or trauma, your one of the tooth starts healing, that is moving. So when it is moving, it is not holding its roots very firmly, shaking tooth. That condition can be prevented in spite of falling that particular tooth. So in that shaking tooth also, you can use the sesame oil, gandush and kavala. Next mouth condition where you can use this is leukoplakia. Leukoplakia is a precancerous condition in the mouth. It is white colored patch over there and which cannot be removed. There is a difference in coating of the tongue and leukoplakia. Leukoplakia is very dangerous because it can be precancerous condition. Here you can recommend iri medadi tail for kaval and gandush. Iri medadi tail. Also, if the patient is suffering from any gum problems like for example, pyorrhea, then in these conditions of pyorrhea, the one can use the irimedadi oil for gargling, kavala and gandusha. So there are lot of conditions where we can recommend this kavala and gandusha sneha externally to treat the problems. Another condition, interesting condition is of pitta condition, aphthous ulcers or stomatitis. This is very painful condition or burning condition. Here I always recommend in my practice milk that means boiled and cooled down milk you have to hold in the mouth or you have to move it in the mouth as much time as possible minimum 5 minutes to 10 minutes and then spit it out. If this milk gargling, mouth gargling is done several times in a day as much as possible you will find there is a tremendous benefit for the stomatitis or the aphthous ulcers. So my dear friends, we are talking about external or bias name. So after Karana Purana, Akshi, Tarpana, Gandusha, Kavala, there are different another methods. For example, Murdha Taila Kalpana. Murdha Taila. Murdha means head or the brain. So we can use the oil in a different way on the head. So first simple way is a shiro taila pichu. We just keep the oil swab on the vertex part of your head. Murda tail, one of first type is a just keep the pichu. Pichu means swab soaked with oil on the vertex part. Second, shiro bhyanga. You have to give the head massage. Shiro bhyanga. Shiro abhyanga. Third one is Shiro Dhara. You have to give the shower, oil shower on the head. That is called as a Shiro Dhara. And last part is Shiro Basti. You have to keep the leather cap on the head. The head should be fully shaved, bald, and you have to keep the leather cap and keep the oil in it for 30 to 45 minutes. So that is called as a Shiro Basti. But remember, here when I use, say the Shiro Basti, it does not have to do anything with the medicated rectal enema. Nothing. Why the Shiro Basti then word is there? Because it is a Vata Upakrama or therapeutic process to control the Vata problems. That is why only the similarity of the word normally your Anuvasana Basti and the Shiro Basti. But two methods are totally different. Shiro Basti, you put the leather cap on the head and put the oil in it for 30 to 40 minutes. So this is also the external type of the or Bahiya Snehana. Next, the way of using is a Keralian system of medicine. They use the Pidit Chila. It is also called as a P D Chila. So, P Jitchil or P Dichil. So, P Jitchil or P Dichil, this is the method of pouring the oil on whole of the body. So, oil shower for whole of the body. 
another word is a kaya sek kaya is a physical body and sek is shower or pouring the oil so oil is poured on the whole body and vata is controlled next you can use the sneha as a lepa kalpana you have to apply the lep with mixing some plants in it and last one is a mardan of course there may be hundreds of other methods but these are the very very important where we are using lubricating material externally which is called as a bahya snehana in ayurved so remember the all these methods that i have used or that i have explained just now are not compulsory before the pradhana karma so they are not necessarily used as a purva karma they can be used as a separate treatment part for a particular disease hmm? so external treatments are basically useful for many skin problems or many vata problems having degeneration or autoimmune type of the pathology for example narayan oil is used as i have already explained you in osteoarthritis now arthritic patient comes to you in two stages this is very interesting first stage is acute stage huh? and second is called as a chronic stage according to ayurveda also it is called as a vega avastha and a vega avastha these are the ayurvedic words vega avastha is called in modern pathi as a relapse vega avastha relapse of the pain and a vega avastha that is called as a remission so my dear friends remember two words vega avastha vega avastha relapse remission relapse remission so when there is not much pain when there is a pain severe pain basically there should not be rubbing rubbing because it is a inflammation so you should not rub the oil but you can apply very gently in the acute stage also in acute stage we always use the visha garbha oil visha garbha tail in acute condition of arthritis use visha garbha oil or visha garbha tail but should not rub it then that will increase your arthritic problem and when pain is reduced no pain is there but joint weakness is there then use the narayan oil which is prepared from shatavari asparagus narayan oil narayan tail next kshirabala oil is very useful as a shirodhara kshirabala tail very useful kshirabala tail why because it contains kshira means milk and bala is sira cardifolia is a very nourishing plant because the brain there are lot of autoimmune or degenerative problems some of the things are insomnia very common in these days tremendous mental work is there intellectual work is there and the person is very tired not physically mentally tired and he suffers from stress as well as the insomnia so kshira bala shirodhara kshira bala tail shirodhara best next condition memory loss in the old age memory loss the person forgets many things family is worried what to do with this grandfather he is forgetting everything so that is called as a senile dementia but when this condition occurs not because of only aging because there is a degeneration of the cerebral cortex then that disease can be alzheimer's disease atrophy of the cerebrum that is alzheimer's disease that is more severe form of the problems of memory loss then there may be parkinsonism then there may be hemiplegia there may be motor neuron disease so in all these conditions you can use kshira bala tail for shirodhara oil shower on the head 
नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज अणु तैल और पंचेन्द्रिय वर्धन तैल फॉर नस्य अणु तैल और पंचेन्द्रिय वर्धन तैल फॉर नस्य नेजल ड्रॉप्स दीज ड्रॉप्स आर ऑल्सो नरिशिंग टू द ब्रेन सो ऑल दीज कंडीशन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस जस्ट नाउ इन एडिशन टू द शिरोधारा यू कैन डू नस्य विथ दिज अणु ऑइल और पंचेन्द्रिय वर्धन तैल नेक्स्ट इज अडबिंदु तैल फॉर शोधन नस्य षडबिंदु वेन एवर द पेशंट कंप्लेन्स ऑफ हेवीनेस इन द हेडेक नॉट लाइटनेस बट हेवीनेस बिकॉज ऑफ द कफ एक्युमुलेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द कफ एक्युमुलेशन इन द रेनी सीजन और इन द विंटर सीजन और बिकॉज ऑफ द ओबेसिटी और बिकॉज ऑफ द साइनोसाइटिस देन यू हैव टू यूज द शोधन तैल लाइक षड बिंदु तैल देन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट शत दौत घृत विच इज एप्लाइड टू द प्लांटर रीजन फॉर आय प्रॉब्लम बट देर इज अनदर यूज फॉर द फिशर्स ऑफ पाम एंड सोल द ड्राई स्किन ऑन युअर पाम एंड ऑन युअर हिल देन ऑल्सो यू कैन यूज द शत दौत घृत देन देर इज वन इंटरेस्टिंग ऑइल विच इज कॉल एज अ चंदन बला लाक्षादी ऑइल चंदन बला लाक्षादी ऑइल सो दिस चंदन बला लाक्षादी ऑइल और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल समाइम्स एज अ बेबी मसाज ऑइल बेबी मसाज ऑइल इट इज व्हेरी गुड नरिशिंग ऑइल बिकॉज इट कंटेन्स चंदन व्हेरी कुलिंग सैंडलवुड बला सीडा कॉर्डिफोलिया एंड लाक्षा दीज टाइप प्लांट्स दे आर मेकिंग युअर बॉडी मोर स्टेबल एंड प्रिवेंट डिजनरेशन सो चंदन बला लाक्षा दी ऑइल मसाज ऑन द बैक और ऑन द लोअर बैक इन द केसेस ऑफ ऑस्टिओपोरोसिस ऑस्टिओपोरोसिस देन वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन अबाउट द कंप्लेट लाइक एस्थेनोपिया this word i have not mentioned you but asthenopia is a tiredness of the eyes or the computer eye syndrome where you can use the trifala grit as a netra basti now in this audio session the last topic will be internal or abhyantara sneha paan internal or abhyantara sneha paan siddh grit or siddh tail that is medicated ghee or medicated oils are used internally or orally there are also two or three types different types first type of this giving the ghee internally is called as a acha paan acha paan paan means to drink the fatty substance and acha means only when you are giving exclusively ghee without mixing in the food then that is called as a acha paan without diluting it without mixing it with the food only and only fatty substance oil or ghee internally orally that is acha paan next is a vicharana vicharana is a one of the traditional method of ayurved is nothing but when these oily or fatty substances are mixed with the food substances then it is called as vicharana for example in maharashtrian thali we always use the rice and mixed with some ghee huh? so rice dal and ghee this is the very popular recipe especially in the india central part of the india next uh, internal sneha paan kalpana is a shaman or palliation so it is a medium dose given before meal when the patient is hungry shaman sneha paan internal next will be tonification it is given every day with the food in a very low dose to improve your body strength tonification like shatavari ghrita for example or phala ghrita in the patients of infertility फल घृत और शतावरी घृत देन 
internally we give the sneha pan as a purva karma before the pancha karma that we have already discussed a lot here we give the sneha pan purva karma for 3 5 or 7 days that is the internally so in this audio session we have talked lot about ayurvedic pancha karma especially we just completed the sneha kalpana in a uh, different manner we have seen the different substances and different medicines prepared from this medicated oils and ghees and the different classification how we can use this sneha kalpana so thank you very much for your patience hearing but let me clear you one fact that this particular script that i have discussed with you this script is prepared by myself professor dr desh pande as well as with uh, dr sarpoddar and dr mayura jadho so all these people have also taken the efforts to prepare this script i thank to all of these my colleagues and the students and we will continue this ayurvedic panchakarma lecture series in step by step manner so today on monday that is uh, i can say uh, 19th of june 2017 ayurved panchakarma snehan part 1 i have finished and i wish you all the best please do not forget to prescribe my youtube channel because i am uploading now these audios on the youtube not only on the mix cloud i am uploading on the youtube and youtube you have to in the search give the words prof prof dot dr dot r dot r dot deshpande so prof dr r r deshpande you will find lot of my audio videos and then please please subscribe my channel so that this ayurvedic knowledge will be spread very fastly thank you very much and have a nice day ahead thank you very much take care